whatever you do, do not buy this camera lens. 90% of the time, I bring just two camera lenses with me. The first is the one that you're looking through right now, which is the wide angle 15 to 35. The other is this guy, which is a telephoto 70 to 200. Now, sometimes I'll bring a 50 millimeter or 35 or, or even an 85 millimeter, but never this guy, which is a 24 millimeter 1.8. So today I'm hoping we can get a few photos. We're, we're back at the Bruce Peninsula and uh, stay tuned for what's coming up. Stefano, are you trying to steal my framing? Sorry. We got the uh, photo crew here today. We got everyone here. <laughs> oh, look at, the, look at that edge light. Oh, look at this. We got some cool ideas. Don't want to spoil them just yet, but I think the 24 millimeter is going to come in super handy. You got a 24? Yeah. Do you have a 24? He shoots on Fuji though. I am the tourist. Do you have a 24? I have a 24 to 70. That's a 24. Do you have a 24? What's this? 24 to 70. All right, that counts. I think we're, we've all got some sort of 24 today. Does a 16 to 55 count? Can you pull it out? Well, can, 24? You 20, can I pull it out? That's a big request. It is a 16 to 55 XF lens. So a 16 to 55 on a crop sensor like a Fuji camera is equivalent to a 24 to 70. So Taha and Will are shooting on the effectively the same camera lens. So everyone's got a 24 today. I heard something might be happening in oh, yeah. this general region. What do you know about what's happening? We're gonna have a long night. And there's uh, something in the sky, like uh, potential. We're gonna try and capture that. We came to the grotto for it. We're gonna see what happens. Fingers crossed. So the reason that I don't use 24 millimeters that often is because 24 millimeters, for me at least, is kind of a weird focal length. I don't know, is this position a weird position to be filming in? Like if you have a 24 to 70, it makes sense because it's the widest focal length that you can shoot at. But when you get something like a 16 millimeter or a 15 millimeter, at least in my opinion, it, it kind of renders the 24 millimeter less useful because you have something that's even wider. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if you are looking to do something like, like portraits, for example, 24 millimeters isn't quite tight enough to get like an aesthetic looking portrait. Like it's too wide in the sense that it, it exaggerates features when you get up. <sighs> Like, like really, really close. That's 24, that's, that's maybe not too bad, but if you're trying to do a portrait session where you want the angles of the subject or the person that you're shooting to look good, 35 millimeters tends to be a slightly more appropriate focal length. I don't know, Stefano, what do you think for um, portrait photography? You're absolutely right. Like I've never shot portraits at 24. It's always been like at minimum 35 millimeter because as soon as you go anything below 35, you start to get like some distortion in your subject's face. It's not too flattering and it's also just too wide. Like 50 millimeters, 70 millimeters, that looks nice. But lower than 35, it's like sometimes, I don't know, like your cheeks and your ears and your nose, it's like, oh, why does your nose look so big relative to like the rest of your face? Whereas like with 35, you're like, okay, we can we can make this work. All right, let's go, uh, let's go shoot some photos at 24 millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here's the plan. There's geomagnetic activity in the area, is that? Yep. Okay, Northern Lights style spectacle in the sky. Might or might not happen, but even if it doesn't, we're gonna do some astrophotography. Bruce Peninsula, landscape in the foreground, one of us standing in as the subject, and hopefully a really epic backdrop, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did you see the sign? The sign that said the bear in area? Did you see? Stefano, what do you know about bears? You're from up north. Me? Yeah. Bears? Look, all I know is black bears is like, you know, but um, brown bears, that's where it like gets scary. You gotta drop down and hope they pass by. I mean, all right, here's here's what I know about bears. Rich, what's that show? <laughs> the best show. So show the uh, the uh, Alone, which is probably my favorite show. It's surprising because they survive for like 60, 90 days out in the wilderness. Not once in all the seasons I've watched has anyone had a serious bear encounter. There's maybe like one where someone had to use their, their bear spray or whatever. All you gotta do, sound scary, make lots of noise. We got Will with us. I could take on a bear. You got a cat here. Just send your uh, your cat to fight the bear. 
So we just stopped to take this photo. It's 24 millimeters. It's a, I don't know, would you consider it a portrait? I would say like an environmental portrait. So it's an environmental portrait. You're getting something that's a little bit wider. You're shooting a subject. And again, that's the nice thing about a 24 millimeters. You're not up close like this. You're a little bit farther back. But really what makes the shot is just the lighting. Like you can see on this photo of Will, he's got a nice edge light off of his shoulder, really helping to separate him from the background. Hey Stefano, do you think that uh, that sea foam tastes any good? Look, I've never tasted it, but I've I, I've swam in lake water and I've tasted lake water. It definitely does not taste like ice cream. I don't know. It kind of looks like ice cream. I think we should give it a little like. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Just use generator filter to change my shorts. On your shorts? Yeah, because I look like a clown with no, these No, I don't know. I kind of <laughs> like them. <laughs> okay, so 24 millimeters is good for some really specific types of shots. The first is the type of atmospheric portraits that you just saw. So we actually just filmed some right over here. I think Rich is still filming. But the idea is that you can capture more of the landscape. It's good for street photography so that you're not getting something that's too wide. Like 16 millimeter street photography sometimes can distort the buildings too much or, or architecture photography. 16 millimeters can be great, but the problem is then you kind of need to do some like transform corrections because sometimes the buildings look like they're just just way too pointy and way too exaggerated. Now, if you are shooting on a crop sensor camera, like the Canon R7, like the Fuji system that Taha's on, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. Then a 24 millimeter is actually more in line with what a 35 millimeter lens would look like. And personally for me, 35 millimeters is a great focal length. So if you're on a crop sensor camera, like a Canon, R50, an R10, or uh, the Sony 6700, which just came out. Using a 24 millimeter lens on one of those cameras is actually a really good pairing. Can you see me? Yeah, you're there. I use 24 a lot, but only because it's the widest focal length I have on this 24 to 70. And like for this kind of thing, I was just saying, 24 works, I can get a nice landscape photo here, but if I had the opportunity, shooting at something like 15 millimeters would be so much nicer. It is kind of nice. What are we shooting at right now? 15 millimeters and you get the sunset over here. You got Bruce Peninsula. Now there's one more type of photo that I think a 24 millimeter, especially a 1.8, like this lens here, is really good for. And we're gonna need it to be night to shoot that type of photo. So. Stay tuned for that. I don't even know if I'll be able to capture any video, but definitely some photo. Oh, here's your, here's your camera back. Montage to night photography. <laughs> Time lapse. Time lapse. As the sun went down, we captured a few more 24 millimeter photos off the edge of the cliff. 24 millimeters turned out to be the perfect focal length to capture the landscape while allowing each of us to take turns jumping into the photo. After the sun went down, we jumped into the water and set our cameras up on tripods to take photos of this rocky spot in the middle of the cove. As it got darker, Rich shot this photo of me with his Sony 24 1.4 G Master, which is one of my favorite photos of the night. We waited until past midnight to see if the northern lights would show up, and when they didn't, we decided to hike back out to try one more spot. But then Will dropped his flashlight all the way down the cliff back into the water. I just knocked it way off the edge. <laughs> oh, nice. After getting the light back, we drove to a new spot to try the 24 with some astrophotography, which is a great use case for a 24 millimeter, especially one that has a low aperture of 1.8 or 1.4. At around 2 a.m., I lined up this 10 second exposure of Will standing on a sandbar in the middle of the lake and was pretty happy with it until Rich yelled over at all of us to turn to the north. And that's when we finally saw it. What do you think, Rich? Did we get it? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, we got it? Let's turn it around. So that is the northern lights right there. We've got like these, what'd you call them? Sprites. Sprites that just kind of like stick up. 
So you can kind of see it with your naked, naked eye, but with the night vision, because it's intensifying the light, you can see it a lot better. So we're gonna grab some photos of it, because it looks really cool right now. This is my first time ever photographing or even seeing the Northern Lights. And if it can look this cool just a few hours north of Toronto, I can only imagine what it's like in other parts of the world. So I know I started this video off by saying to never buy a 24 millimeter lens, but after seeing some of the photos that we took last night, we got lucky, we caught the Northern Lights, we took some really epic sunset photos. I do think 24 millimeters, at least maybe like a 1.8, because you've got that nice aperture setting, does have a place in my camera bag. I don't know if it's gonna be a lens that I carry with me every day, but if you shoot on Canon, I think the STM lens is a really great option. If you shoot on a different system, Nikon, Sony, whatever, I'll go ahead and leave some options down in the description below that you can check out for lenses that work with your camera system. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, leave a comment down below. What's your favorite focal length or what's a focal length that you haven't used that you're thinking about using more? And until the next one, go shoot photos.